Folks, back on the Boss Man Show from the show, Russ Turner, UCI and Eaters, 95 on the year, 71 in conference play, doing big things at 5 and 1 in the conference play, brother, doing big things out there in the Big West. Coach, what's up, man? How you doing, brother? I'm good. It's good to be with you, Boss Man. Yes, indeed. Coach, man, last time we talked, man, you was playing real well last year and everything got shut down is in March there. So tell us, how was it for you and your staff and your players, man, leaving you all that time, man, and having to do things via Zoom and virtual learning and all that kind of stuff? How was that journey for you and your players and your, and your staff, man? Yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a wild ride, you know, for us like everybody else. And, and yet I've been impressed with my players' resilience. Um, it's easy to get uh, feelings of, you know, disappointment. Um, I think entitlement creeps in for a lot of guys. And, and my team's done a real good job of fighting that, I think. And so I feel good about it. You know, it's been a challenging um, bunch of months, you know, on the social justice front, um, on the academic front, obviously on the athletic front. Uh, so we know it hasn't been easy, uh, but um, – I like to think that the guys in our program, you know, came here because they want to accomplish things that are hard. And uh, everybody has had to figure out ways to do that during this time. And I think my guys have done a pretty good job of it. And yeah, Coach, you know, UCI, great education, right? Academics is great out there. And going from that on-campus support of academic advisors and tutors and having on that on-campus structure to being virtual. And some guys are international as well. So the challenge is right there. So how is it for your coaches and your academic advisor staff to make sure your young men's grades stayed high in this virtual environment due to those forcing you guys and all of us due to the COVID, which is still around us, unfortunately? Yeah, yeah, it's hard. But uh, to to my guys' credit, we've had some of the best grades um, in this period where we've been going through virtual learning that we've ever had. And some of that, I think, is because the guys here have bought into how important that is. And and I think it's also that there's not time for a whole lot else. And, uh, you know, we've adapted well. You know, we've got a guy on our team from Atlanta. And, uh, you know, he's been out here most of the time um, and, and several other guys from, from places other than right here. You know, it's hardest on those guys, I think, to feel that distance. But it's even hard for the guys on our team who are, uh, from right here because they're trying so hard to avoid COVID that they're having very little contact with anybody. So um, all that stuff adds to the degree of difficulty, to the challenges, but there's no real choice other than to adapt to what's right in front of you and do the best you can. And uh, we've done that. I think that's been a consistent message in this program and our guys have, uh, have lived up to those challenges. And that's what I'm hoping we can now do on the basketball court here in the last six weeks of the season. Now, Coach, did Austin tell you that how Atlanta is wide open? How the back your way is back your way in California is kind of tight, but here in Atlanta, man, it's wide open. So, did Austin kind of tell you, tell you guys about that as well? Well, we, we've known that it's been different everywhere, you know. Um, and he did tell me that um, that that it's it feels different there than here. And I think a lot of that has to do with who's in charge, you know, which party. Um, politically in the state government. Um, It has been tight here, uh, but there's also been a lot of virus in certain spots here, so it's needed to be tight. Um, And we've been healthy. You know, we just got back from Hawaii. Our team took a trip to Hawaii, and it was even more strict in Hawaii uh, than it is here in California. So it was good for our guys to see that. And, And I'm glad it was that way when we traveled because it felt safe because of that. Most definitely. And speaking of how tight it was, so when did you get your guys back on campus to actually get them ready for this year? Because I know you said that here in Georgia, it was wide open from like May on, right? But for you guys in California, your governor Newsom was not playing that. So how was it kind of get your guys ready yeah. based on the protocols to get them knowing that California was tight for getting guys on campus, bringing them back to get them learning the right way? So how was that for you guys as well? Right. Well, it was hard. And, uh, and, and that's had an effect on us this year because we weren't able to take our guys through a normal – in any way normal type of off-season conditioning program or training program. We didn't have the opportunity to work with our players all the way up until the official first day of practice. Um, and so that was a struggle. And, and that struggle was compounded for us because we're such a young team. I think we're the second youngest team in Division One. You know, I've only got two 
upperclassmen. Everybody else is either freshmen or sophomores. Um, but, you know, there's not really any time to make excuses or, you know, to talk about what isn't fair or anything like that. All you can do is the best with what you've got. We've tried to do that. And our, our team's come along. You know, we, uh, we, we would have been further along if we had been able to do everything that we do with our conditioning program and everything that we do with our individual skills program and everything we normally do with the build, the build up to our season. Uh, but where we are right now, I think is a pretty good place. You know, we, we've got to, we got to keep getting better, uh, but the future is bright for our program. And I know that. Now coach, how cool was it to have these zoom calls this, this season with, with, with your players before doing the shutdown because of all things they have with social justice and talking about the different backgrounds. You got guys, you know, national guys, different parts of the country. How cool is it to hear all your different players perspectives and get their, get their thoughts on what's going on around them and trying to get their feel for their, how they really understand the gravity of what's going on in our country this summer. Yeah, well, you know, we we did that like uh, like most everybody else did. We had to do it over Zoom, and uh, and doing that stuff over Zoom is not nearly as um, meaningful as doing it in person. But with Zoom being all we had, um, we you know those were powerful meetings. Uh, there, there's a lot of pain that. Uh, that, that, that people get pent up and, um, and, and guys had a chance to release. And I felt good that they could release that pain, but it's also heartbreaking to experience the emotions that come with some of the subjects we had to grapple with this summer. Um, and, and you never as a leader probably feel totally like you're doing enough. I, I don't know that I, <laughs> I, I can't feel that I'm doing enough. Uh, and, and that, I think that the best thing for our players was to be able to mostly express um, some of the frustrations that they've they felt with uh, the way that they've been treated, the way their friends have been treated, the way their families have been treated, and also with some of the things that they they, they saw politically, sort of the, the momentum that was building in the wrong direction. And a lot of us are hoping that that's changed some. The political momentum has changed some, at least. Um, and, and credit to your state, you know, the, the state of Georgia, we were all pulling for uh, so yeah. much that happened there, you know, in this election cycle. But we know we got a lot of work to do and um, we're all committed. You know, that's what I asked for from my guys is, hey, f figure out what's meaningful in your life and then commit to it. And we're all committed to trying to be better. I think that's uh, something we can we can do. We've all got to figure that out. And we all got to make sure that we make an impact. And coach, I'm so glad you said that because for me, coach, I had no idea how much impact my show had on people until I got the emails and saying thank you for talking about these subjects and sharing your story. I shared that I'm from Atlanta, I'm from the hood, I grew up not so great, but I got a radio show on a platform, and I'm covering the NBA, college basketball, and I do that every day. And hey, knowing where you, I man. started from. And where I am today, 33 years old, I'm blessed. And I want to use my platform to help others get back to Atlanta and beyond because it's so important to use platforms we have for good and do God's work the right way for good. And I just feel so empowered and emboldened now to do even more because um, I feel like, you know, it's, just, it's time now, Coach, to help this country change for good. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more, boss, man. And, uh, and I, I appreciate what you're doing too and uh, and all the different ways you're trying to have your impact you know that came clear to me on martin luther king day this year you know because um growing up in virginia and having lived in georgia you know i think i, I might have told you before i used to teach high school i taught high school for one year in rome georgia mm, you um, told me the impact of yeah yeah you know the martin the impact of martin luther king um is something that i've felt maybe more than the guys that i got out here and, uh, you know, when, when his uh, day came up and I spent time um, trying to explore a little bit the amount of his history that my guys knew, I was surprised that there wasn't more that they felt connected to than they did. And, and I'm like you, when I have an opportunity to uh, use my position as a leader to try to help educate our guys, um, it feels like a good day for me. It feels like a a positive purpose. And, uh, and, and I feel that the same way you do, man. So I appreciate you and let's stay at it.
And coach, you know, I lost four sponsors, but I was like, I'm glad I lost four sponsors. Cause I mean, I'm doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't lose no more. <laughs> yeah, hey, 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 that's a fine line, man. I know what you mean. I mean, yeah, hey, stand up for what's right. Stand up, stand up for what is right over and over again. That's uh, that's the thing I think that Martin Luther King did most. He stood up for what he believed was right. He played an unbelievably um, painful cost for that. And, and the courage he had to do that, um, standing up for what's right, is, is, is the impact he's most made on me and so many others. And I hope that my guys, my young guys who don't have that connection to him can learn it. And coach, no, I'm blessed. No, my mother and father are 80 and 70 years old. They grew up during the time Dr. King was here in Atlanta doing doing his they were, they was younger, but they was around, right? And yep, so yep. my mom knew John Lewis. I met John Lewis, you know. I knew I Re- Reverend Vivian and Reverend Andrew Reverend Andrew, Andrew Young. All these civil rights icons in Atlanta, I got to meet them because of my parents. And Reverend Warnock and John Ossoff are Atlanta Hawks fans. So I see them at the Atlanta Hawks game. So two people who I know personally are in the Senate now, who I've been around cool. at various towns in my life. And so, Coach, for me, this whole year has like been like, it's amazing seeing people who I've known and been around, my parents been around, see the impact they have coming to fruition in this 2020, 21 year already. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. And, uh, you know, hey, I'm going to challenge you the same way I challenge my guys. When things go well, it's often the hardest time to keep them going well. You know, so uh, we got to build on the momentum that uh, you feel when you make positive progress. You get that right, Coach. Tell us about the trip to Hawaii. I guess that's like the one of the coolest trips you guys have going over to Hawaii to play all those guys, the Rainbow Warriors. So tell us about that trip for you guys and playing well out there as well. Then coming back here, you got Rob Barnes coming to you tomorrow this weekend. Tell us about that match as well for you guys out there. Yeah, well, I mean, first the trip to Hawaii was interesting. You know, we hadn't we hadn't flown as a team um, before this trip, and to go to Hawaii now, you have to you have to present a negative COVID test, and you have to have electronic proof of that. You have to have a QR code in order to get on the plane to go to Hawaii, and uh, it's good that you have to have that. I think that's a credit to Hawaiian Airlines and to their state because there was a better feeling of safety flying there than there might have been flying anywhere else because of those requirements and then the uh the flight attendants really enforced masking and most of my guys were double masking because of how critical it would be in a negative way for us if anybody tested positive for covid and then when we got there in hawaii they had infrared thermometers um that they, so they were monitoring everybody's temperature as you came into the airport and uh they had the army doing that and so they were really strict in the protocols that they had. Um, nothing in Hawaii, in, in uh, Honolulu, right there on Waikiki, stayed open past 10 o'clock. They had, the poli- they had a strong police presence, uh, making sure that people were doing the things they needed to do to stay safe. And so um, the trip felt somewhat safe. And uh, yet it didn't feel um, at all like a vacation. It never does. It felt less that way because there were so many fewer tourists. There were almost nobody there. Um, but we had two games there. And so two games after a long trip to Hawaii is a big challenge. Uh, my team came out on top of the first game. Uh, we didn't close that one as well as I thought that we could have. And then we really collapsed down the stretch in the second game. And, um, and we're not able to win that one in regulation and then not able to win it again in overtime. And so it was disappointing not win both those games. But uh, credit to Hawaii for beating us. I think we learned some valuable lessons. I think that we've got to get better. And, uh, you know, we've got, a, as you mentioned, we've got a very tough Bakersfield team coming in here uh, with a great coach in Rod Barnes. Uh, they played well in their first year in the Big West, and they have a really experienced team. I think they have seven seniors, and uh, they're kind of the opposite of us. We're maybe the second youngest team in Division One, and they're the most experienced team in Division One. So we've got our hands, you know, we got our hands full this weekend playing those guys. Uh, fortunately for us, we're playing at home, and so we're going to need to play well. Um, hopefully to bounce back from a, a disappointing loss. Uh, but we're playing in games we think can be really influential in determining the conference championship this uh, this weekend. So I'm um, excited for that, I'm excited for my guys, and uh, kind of ready to get it on. That's one for your coach is this. What was your quarantine hobby? Mine was playing the guitar and hiking around the, the trails here in Georgia. What was your quarantine hobby? <laughs> well, I got a lot of reading in and uh, got a lot of Netflix in. 
Um, my golf course is out here open, so I played played a lot of golf and uh, got a little bit better at that because there wasn't a whole lot else to do. Well, mostly, you know, I got time to spend with my kids. You know, my kids uh, are 16 and 13, and so the time that we had that we were forced to be together was really great time for me and for them and for my wife. Uh, so we felt fortunate to have that. We got uh, we got a couple of puppies right at the start of it, like a lot of people. So uh, we tried to acclimate those two to the house, and uh, we had we we had plenty to do. I, I didn't feel like we missed out on a whole lot. Uh, yeah, I know. I said, come, come like this time of year, coach, you'd be on the road recruiting. But then you, you go to the office, you do your thing, you come home, and you're back there with your family. So as as wife getting sick, sick of you already, coach, she wants you around more. Well, you know, my wife's a COVID doc. So she, she works in intensive care, taking care of COVID patients. So she's, uh, she's actually been more busy through the pandemic than ever. Uh, but I think we've got a good balance, man. We're lucky. I got, uh, I got a good woman and uh, we got a great family and, and we're fortunate, man. I'm, I'm thankful for that. No doubt, Coach. Best luck to you, Coach, against Rob Barnes on the Bakersfield team, man. The whole talk, talk to you again in March when you win a championship, my guy. Okay, thanks, brother. I appreciate you, man. Hey, Coach. See, see you, buddy. All right, see you. All right. All right.